All right, welcome back to the State of the Union. Ah, we got a special guest here, Mossy. The great Dax McCarty is joining us uh, from where I presume is Nashville. For those that are just listening, I'm going to describe the scene here for you. It's it's a glorious uh, redhead, uh, a glorious possessor of the mutant gene, a glorious ginger, and then what may or may not be a real plant behind him, but he looks gorgeous. Welcome, Dax, to the State of the Union. Um, this is We're recording this on Monday. Uh, the game tomorrow, Nashville hosting Orlando, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on FS1 is on uh, is on Tuesday. And so I, I recognize that some of you may be hearing this or listening to this after that game. But we're going to talk first uh, about this game here. How how do we find ourselves here when it comes to Nashville, where you had such a successful regular season in only your second year? And let's be honest, it's really the first year because we know what, what 2020 was. Uh, finishing uh, third place, hosting a uh, playoff game. How is it that Nashville has become so successful and so consistently successful so fast, if you can encapsulate it? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Uh, anytime there's a redhead host, uh, I, I tend to I tend to jump at the opportunity a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't happen often. And also the plant is real, by the way. Nice. Um, Good. My wife would not have a fake plant in here. Uh, but to your second question, more important question, um, I, I think we just have greater flexibility this year. And I mean that in a tactical sense. And I mean that in a depth sense. I think that we have a deeper roster than we had last year. Like you said, last year was a little bit of an anomaly because of COVID, because of all the, the things that we went through as a group. So this year, I think towards the end of last year, we wanted to kind of bottle up what we, what we had at the end of 2020 and kind of parlay that into 2021. And I think we were able to do that very well. I think Gary Smith, our head coach, was able to – help our team out tactically in terms of a formation change. We, we went to a little bit more of a solid base with three center backs. Uh, and I think it really opened up our attacking players to do what they do best. Hani Mukhtar, CJ Sapong, Randall Leal, they all had career best years. Uh, and so full credit goes to our staff and our players for being able to adjust on the fly to that. And I think it's really brought the best out of us. Uh, Dax, uh, a lot of debate about the MVP this year, as there always is. Alexi, believe it or not, gets a vote. I believe he went with Demir Krylock. But uh, make a case for your guy. You just mentioned Hani Mukhtar. Why do you think perhaps he should win it? Wow, Alexi, going off the beaten path a little bit. You don't say. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, first of all, I think I think Demir Krylock is a fantastic player, and I think he had a great year. I think we have this debate every year about MVP. There's very few years where there's really one standalone candidate that everyone can agree on that says they had the best year. So. Uh, I am a homer, no question about it. Uh, I see what Hani Mukhtar has done game in and game out for us this year. I think if you look at last year, obviously with the COVID circumstances and him coming in as our first big signing, our DP, uh, you know, people probably were a little bit disappointed in the season that he had. And just to see him elevate his game to such a higher level uh, that he has elevated it to this year, uh, he's really been the catalyst for everything good that our team does on the attacking side of the ball. And so I think if you look by all the metrics and all the numbers and all the data that you want to quantify, I think he's, you know, he's got double digit goals, double digit assists, numerous game winning goals, uh, you know, most combined goals and assists in the league. You know, he's been certainly one of the best players in MLS. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find an argument against him winning the MVP. So I hope he does. Uh, but I understand there's a lot of other deserving players out there. All right, Dax, let's take it a little bit more big picture. And I love talking to you because you've been around for a long time. You've played uh, in, in multiple kind of different eras and you've been able to see the evolution, not just of Major League Soccer, but also of, of soccer in, in general. When you take a step back and you look at where, let's start with Major League Soccer, where, where, it, where it has come from when you first started, where it is right now, but I guess more importantly, where do you see it going and, and, and your experience with Nashville, but also your experience with, uh, with, with other teams and what that could be on or off the field. Well, thank you, Alexi. I think that's a nice roundabout way of calling me old. Yep. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, but it does mean that I've been around for a long time. And so I've done something right. And just to see when I, when I turned pro MLS in turn from, from a purely from a, an infrastructure perspective was diabolical. We were playing at football stadiums, college football stadiums with horrific turf. Uh, the, the circumstances around depth of rosters was was very bad. Uh, you couldn't rely on more than 11 or 12 players to, to get the job done week in and week out. I think what I've seen the most is just 
the excellence of our academies that have started to produce and churn out players that can contribute week in and week out that are 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. That is night and day from when I turned pro. And I, I turned pro young. You know, I was one of the, the rare ones that went back 15, 16 years ago. I was 18 when I turned pro. That was not the norm. Now, I think if you want to, you know, there's many different paths to be a pro and to be successful, as Chris Wondolowski has shown us. But I think nowadays, if you're if, if you're not in an academy or turning pro at 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, you're already behind the eight ball. That's how it is in Europe. That's how it is now in the U.S. And I think that the infrastructure for young players nowadays is so much better. Uh, you're really going to see MLS, I think, start to tilt more towards the younger side of the ball. How about the U.S. national team? There's so much excitement right now. And you play with a guy in Walker Zimmerman who's really emerging as a factor there. Um, what has he told you about this group that Greg Berhalter is fostering? And what, what can you see yourself? Yeah, I think Walker Zimmerman uh, has had a, a fantastic year for club and country. Uh, I, I look at, I've, I don't know who they played in the window before this last one with Mexico, but I'm pretty sure Walker was, uh, he wasn't even called up. He was an alternate, and I think he was an injury replacement who then went on to, I think he started two out of the three games or maybe all three games. And then the performance against Mexico, I really think it solidified his role as, uh, you know, if he's not a, a written in pen starter, he's certainly close to that. Uh, he's been fantastic for the national team. He's been fantastic for us. I think it's a really young, hungry group of players. Uh, I think that they have great leadership from top to bottom and, and they're very young and you look at a guy like Walker, but you look at Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, uh, Christian Pulisic. This is a new generation of, of U.S. men's national team players that are playing for Champions League clubs. They're all in their low, low 20s, uh, some teenagers. Uh, and there's a, a really heavy expectation, uh, weight of the world, if you will, on their shoulders. And it's cool to see them embrace that. They're embracing that. I think they're doing very well. Uh, I think that they try to stay as humble as they possibly can, but that's where a, a guy like Walker is so valuable. He'll keep everybody honest. That, that's, that's, I think, one of the best qualities about Walker is that he's never satisfied. He's never hungry. He's always looking towards the future. Dax, let's jump back to, uh, to Nashville and give you an opportunity to wax poetic on that city. We've been there. We've seen what it is. But, you know, as I said, you've been around, and that, and, and, and being around, you've seen different markets and, and you know, even markets that we didn't even think were soccer markets. What, what is so special about Nashville when it comes to soccer? They take so much pride in, in you representing their city. Uh, I've played for some great clubs, some clubs with fantastic history and tradition. Um, and, and a club like Nashville, it's only been around for, let's say, four years, going back to the USL days. Uh, but people feel such a strong connection with the sports teams here uh, because it's known as a, a music town. It's music city. Alexi, you'd fit in perfectly here with your guitars and, and you know, your country vibe. Uh, you're more of a country vibe now than a rock and roll vibe that you were back in the day. But uh, the people here take so much pride in, in their sports teams. And it's no it's not really that dissimilar from other great sports towns. I think that the city is just growing so much from a perspective of there's there's new people moving here every year and they want something to latch on to. They want they want something to believe in. And I just feel like the whole community here is so supportive, uh, whether you win or you lose. I think it helps that we've been successful for two years now. Um, but I think we announced today that I think we have 18,000 season ticket deposits already for our new stadium next year. 90% of, of, you know, tickets have been sold, I think, for, for opening our opening game in, in May uh, in our new stadium. And I think it just shows that this city is, is, is a soccer city, no question about it. Uh, and the fans are going to continue to prove that. And on that point, Dax, you came into the league at the same time as Inter Miami. They got all the attention because of David Beckham and some other factors. Uh, and then you beat them in the playoffs uh, last year. And then you do what you guys have done this year. Did you compare yourselves to Inter Miami? And if so, how satisfying is it that through two years, you've been the much, much better franchise? Yeah, I think it's difficult to not compare yourself to a team that comes in at the same time. Uh, I think internally as a group, you know, we really wanted to distance ourselves from the comparisons because we built our rosters in two completely separate ways. And I think you guys know this, Alexi knows this more than anyone. There is no perfect formula to win in MLS. Some teams spend millions of dollars and win. Some teams spend millions of dollars and lose. And I think the, the, the people that were in power at Nashville SC had a plan. 
They stuck to that plan. They didn't care what anyone said about that plan. They didn't care about what anyone said about signing an old guy like me uh, and a few other players that maybe people thought were past their primes. Uh, and they stuck to the plan and it's, it's paid off. It's been beneficial. And inner Miami was always going to be the sexy team. Everyone was going to talk about them. David Beckham is a legend of, of the game of soccer, not just here in MLS, but in world world soccer. So that was always going to be the case. I think the fact that we took that a little bit personally and we proved on the field uh, what we were all about. That's all that matters to us. We don't really care about the glitz and glamour and, and what anyone else says. And I think that's the best part about our team is we just get on with the, the job and do our business. All right, let's let's wrap it up here with uh, with this question. Uh, you you're not old. You're just older. But and I think you got plenty of years and plenty of soccer uh, still to play. But you know, at this time in a career, uh, every player is certainly looking forward and seeing around that corner when the ball stops rolling and you're stopping to kick the ball. I think you got a wonderful future, whatever it is that you do decide to do. But what are some of the things that you are thinking about when that happens? Well, Alexi, you know, I, uh, I joined you and uh, the legend Rob Stone for a, a U.S. soccer halftime broadcast where I got in, I think, 12 seconds of airtime where I, I very promptly said what I needed to say and I hopped on the peppy train and then from there he took off. So that made me look really nice. Uh, certainly broadcasting and commentating is something I'm passionate about. Uh, I think that soccer in this country is going to continue to grow. And with that, uh, there will be a void in terms of People that are passionate about talking about the game, uh, that's something that I've considered, but I'm taking my B license coach coaching course right now as well. Uh, I want to stay involved in the game of soccer, no question about it. I want to be involved uh, in one way or another. Uh, I only got through three semesters at University of North Carolina, so I don't know if I'd be able to do anything else outside of the game, uh, but it's certainly something that you start to consider as you get a little bit older and as you start to gain a little bit more perspective on your career, you don't want to just retire and then think, Oh, what am I going to do now? So it's something that I've thought about. Uh, I certainly hope I have a few more years left and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what comes calling when, uh, when that time comes. Well, listen uh, from run, from one redhead, uh, ginger, uh, mutant gene, whatever you want to call us to another, I welcome you with open arms into the industry if and when you want to do that. We cannot have too many as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and you did a great job when you uh, when you were with us uh, earlier. But as I said, you got plenty of soccer to play. Uh, Nashville hosting Orlando once again on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific on FS1. We will be broadcasting that game. It might have already happened by the time that you, uh, you hear this. Who knows? Uh, Dax and his uh, Nashville team may have moved on or who knows other things could have happened, but either way, an incredibly successful year. Congratulations, uh, Dax. Good luck on the game. And uh, thanks for coming on the state of the union, my friend. Thanks for having me guys. You like that clip? Well, my state of the union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.